For each meaningful app, you need multiple screens and pages, and therefore we want to look at the navigator and specifically at the push, pop, replace, pop until and push and remove until methods. Therefore, we want to build a small application where you push different screens and you can also pop, which means you go one screen back and you also have your pop all, so you go all the screens back. At the end of this video, we will also look at some more complex example, so you can allow the user to actually go back or not and therefore you have here some access over it. We will also look at how we can transfer data from one page to another page. So for example, you transferred right now this kind of data to the second page and you can also return some data to the previous screen and then this previous screen get here at the end the result back. Let's get started with our first page. So I've created here a file first page and here inside we basically want to create a new button and we give it some text and then if you click on this button we want to actually push to the new page to the page 2. How we can do this is by calling navigator.push and here inside you need to put first of all the context which you get normally from your build method and you also need to put here inside a material page route and this then takes an attribute builder and here we need to return then our page where we want to go. So I have created here also a second page and we simply call then this name here. And also make sure that you import here at the top the second page with your importment statement. Now we can click on this button and you see that we are going to the second page and you can also click here then you are going back. So what is happening here is that in the beginning we have on our navigation stack the first page which is this page here and if we click here on this button then we push to the new page. So we call the navigator.push and he puts a new page on the stack and we can later also push other pages and then every time a new page is here put to our stack. Now let's go to our second page and here on the left side you see I have also a file with the second page and this time we want to put here a button inside and we call it pop page one. So we want to go back to the page one and how you can do this programmatically is by calling navigator.pop and then you also need to put here the context of your build method inside. And this looks then like this, so we can click on this button and we simply go here again back to our page one. So let's look at what happens internally. So we have here our navigation stack with two pages and if we then click on pop, then we simply pop the last page from our stack and then the last page will be displayed here inside. So I click on pop and the first page is showing again. And if you have, for example, three pages on your stack and then you call pop, then the third page will be popped and you will be at the second page. Then you can pop again and then you are at the first page. Now we want to also replace a page and therefore we create here some spacing under our button and create a second button and we call it replace. And basically we call again our navigator, so let's call it. And then you have here the method push replacement. So before we use push and now we want to replace also our route. And then we put again the build context inside and this material page route like we did before. And again we put our second page then here inside. And now let's look at the difference. So if we click here on push, you see that we can go back to our previous page. However, if I click on replace, then I cannot go back. This is not working. And if I click now on pop, then you see our application won't work anymore. Let's look at what happens internally if we click here on replace. So in the beginning we are at the page one. So our stack contains the page one and we want to replace page two. So he simply pushes out this page one and remove it from our stack and put here the new page two inside, inside of our stack. And then we have only one in our stack. And now if we click here on pop and try to pop our last screen, then we have no screen anymore and the app doesn't know what to show in our app. And then you have here this arrow. So always make sure that you have at least one screen if you call pop. And this example works also with multiple pages. So let's say you have three pages on your stack and then you call replace with page four and then he will simply replace this page three with the page four. 
Let's also look at how we can pop multiple pages. So we simply create here on our second page a new button where we go also to a page three. And here inside we call again the navigator.push, what we learned in the beginning. We have here context, the material page route inside, and then we put here our third page inside, which I also have created here in this third page file. And now we have here this button and can go also to the page three. On this page, we create a new button and inside of this button, we call it pop all. So we want to pop all the pages from our stack. And here we simply call therefore the navigator. And here you have pop until this method. And here you can basically define again the context of our build method. And then comes the interesting part. So you can define here a route to which you want to pop to. So here we define our home route and a home route has always here this slash. And if we do this, then we have here this button and we can click on pop all. And then he will pop all pages from our stack and goes again to our page one. And this scenario is what happens then. So we have here a stack with three pages and here we are on the third page. And now we call pop until if we click here on this button and we also give it a model route with name slash, which is our home page. So we tell our stack, okay, pop until our home page. And that is what he then does. So he simply pops the third page, the second page, until he finds our home page, which is this page here with a slash. And then he will stop popping it and we return here to the first page. Later, you can also define here inside of this model route other routes. So for example, you can define the page two and then it should look, for example, like this, that you pop until the page of two and then he will keep here the second page on our screen. And therefore you need named routes, which you learn in the next tutorial. From the third page, you can obviously also go to the second page. So you can also create a button and here, every time if you click on it, you call navigator.pop, which we have learned already in the beginning. And now you can simply also click on pop and then he will go to the second page. And then you can also click again pop and he will go to the first page. So we can basically push here some pages and pop some pages and we can also at the end pop all of our screens from our stack. Now we want to look at a more complex example. So like I showed you in the beginning, we want also to put some data to our new screen. And also if we go back, then we also want to give here the result back to the first page. And by the way, if you want to get this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my Flutter course, where I teach you how you can become a more advanced Flutter developer. Let's get started on our first page and create a new button. And here we want to put some new data to our second screen. So I call here navigator.push. And here we need to put our context again inside and our material page route like we did before. Then we also create here this builder and put here our new page inside. Until now, this is nothing new. However, now we want to pass some data to the new screen. So you simply can put here some data inside and therefore we put here, for example, some string inside from the first page. And now we need to go to the new page where we are going. So I have created this pop result page and there we want to create a data attribute inside. So let's go to this pop result page and here inside of the constructor, we create first of all a data and then we put it here into our constructor. And here you can basically also put other things inside, for example, an integer. And then you need to go to your first page and put here some other data inside, for example, this integer. And this will then also go to the second page. So basically you can define here anything what you like and you can also rename this data attribute and put here on this pop result page a different name for it inside. We will put here a string back inside and now we want to also display it on the second page. And this is pretty easy. So we simply call here this data attribute inside of our build method. So I create here a new text widget and inside I paste here this widget.data inside. So we access exactly this field here and then we also give it some other font style. All right, let's try this example out. So we have here this button and we pass this information, this data to our new screen and the new screen will then show it here inside of their screen. So this is really basic and you can also put some information back from this screen to the screen before if you go back. And how we do this is by going to our push method 
And here in front we can write a wait and then we get a result back. So we wait for a result of the second page. And this result which we get back we can simply right now show inside of a snack bar for example. So I create here a snack bar with the text of got result. And here inside we make use of string interpolation. So we have here this dollar and some brackets around and then we put here our object inside. Therefore I'm here right now at the pop result page and create a new button and here inside if we click on this button we want to call navigator.pop. And this method basically has here some result which you can put optionally inside. And this is what we want to do here exactly. So you can put here any type of information inside. You can put here an object inside, an integer, a string or whatever you like. And we will put here right now a string back. Now we can try this example out. So if I click here on this button, we will return this hello world and let's simply try it out. So here you see got result hello world. And this is exactly this here, this string which we have returned. And you can also put here some other value inside. So here I click again on this button and this time we got here this result three back. Let's put again the string inside and again let's go to the first page and here basically we got then every time this result back which we are then displaying in our snack bar. Now we also want to create a more fancy example so you can also create a text field and then you can put here any result inside and then if you click here on pop this result will then be popped to the screen before. Therefore we go to our pop result page again and here we want to display simply this text field. Therefore I create here a text editing controller which we need for this text field. Then we also create here a field for result where we want to put our result inside which we then return to the first page. And the remaining part is pretty simple. We simply create here a text field and inside we put our controller which we have created here at the top and we also put here some decoration inside. So this is really basic and then we have here this unchanged. So every time if we type some new data in our text field then we want to put this new data inside of our result object. And the last part is to simply exchange here this hello world with our result field. So this field was every time changed with our text field and then we simply return this value which comes from our text field. Let's try this example also out. So we have here this result text field and we can type here anything inside and then we click on pop with result and then he will simply return here this high value back to our first page. And this was dynamically what we have created on the second page. Let's also look at another more advanced example. So we have here this button and if we click on it we go to the new page and here inside we can then toggle if the user is allowed to go back or if he's not allowed. And therefore you have on Android for example this back button and we simply say okay if he's allowed to go back to the previous screen or not and we simply toggle it here and if we do this you also see that he can go here again back and then he is allowed to go back and go to the page one. Therefore let's go here again to our first page and here in between all of these buttons we create a new button and here we simply call navigator.push and push to this new page which we want to create right now. So let's quickly create this design of the page. So we have simply a toggle button and with this one we can define if it is allowed to go back or not. And therefore we go here to our will pop scope page and create a new field. And here we have a boolean field to say okay is he allowed to go back or not. In the beginning we set it to false. And then we create here our text which says is allowed to pop page. And we also want to create our toggle button and therefore we use here this Cupertino switch. Here inside we put simply this is allowing pop which is exactly this value here at the top. And now every time if we click on this Cupertino switch then we want to toggle the value. So we implement the unchanged handler and put here our new value which we get from this unchanged handler to this is allowing pop. So on our second page we can now toggle this button and he will simply always change then this property which we have here at the top. Let's start with the first case so we can also put here this back button inside or we can hide it. So we go to our app bar and here inside you can put the leading property inside which is this property here in the beginning. And every time if we are allowed to pop then we want to show this back button here, this button which you see here right now and otherwise we want to show a container if we are not allowed. And now if you simply toggle here this button you see that this is hiding 
And if I activate this button again, then you see we can go here back. On Android, you also have here this back button. And now if we click here on this one, that it should be not allowed and click on this back button, it will also work. And this is what we want to prohibit. To implement this feature, we go again to our Willpop page, this page here, and we wrap our scaffold around with a new widget, which is called Willpop scope. And then you have here this on Willpop handler. And here you can basically return a false or a true. And if you return false, we don't want to allow it to go back to the previous screen. And if you put here a return true inside, then it is allowed to go back to the previous screen. And what we want to do here is we want to return a future value. And here we can then return, for example, a true, and then it should be allowed to pop the screen. And if you set it to false, it should not be allowed to pop the screen. Or we simply put here our is allowing pop attribute inside, and then we can simply toggle this field and then we return here true or false, depending on if we have this activated, then it is true. And if we have this, then it is false. All right, let's try this out. So right now we are deactivated. And now if we click here on this back button, you can click there and nothing will happen. And now we can also activate it again. And then this should here return true and it should be allowed again to go here back with our back button. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.